adding projectiles to our programming games can add in an additional layer of interest and excitement and fun. But remember, projectiles do not have to be harmful. It can be sharing. It can be a positive thing. So we don't always have to think of the violent metaphor as part of what we're doing. In this particular example, when it comes up, we will see there is the unicorn. There is the blinking eyeball. You press the space bar and it shoots and it, you can see I scored. If I go the other direction, I can shoot. And every time a bullet goes off screen, then I can fire again. So it's Space Invader style that you only get one bullet on screen at any given time. It's not the most satisfying way because if you shoot across the screen, you have to wait until the bullet's gone, which makes it difficult sometimes. And that was always part of the challenge in a game like Space Invaders. But with this, I can aim, I can shoot, and then the enemy resets itself after it has been shot by my bullet. So that is the core of how it works. For this, it requires an additional bullet class. The bullet class is very similar to the other classes that we've worked with, but it is doing things slightly different because it is using angle and rotation because this bullet class works for shooting in a horizontal manner like what we just witnessed, but it also as we advance we'll be able to shoot at any angle and at any speed so it's a very flexible bullet down the road the key thing on the bullet is when we tell it a, a bullet to shoot we have to provide it with where should it start on screen and what rotation should it have in this case our rotation is either zero or pi so if we think pi is equal to 180 degrees so we're either shooting at zero degrees or 180 degrees, left or right. Zero is shooting to the right, 180 is shooting to the left, 180 degrees is pi, and the rotation equations in processing accept values in radians, which are measured in pi instead of degrees. So that's why when you look at the rest of the code, you'll see it's sending in a value of pi or zero. Now, the bullet, when it first is set up, it asks the question, hey, am I already firing? So if I'm not firing, in other words, firing is false, the bullet resets its X and Y to the starting location, sets its rotation, and then sets firing to true and gives itself a speed. If we look at when a bullet's created, it starts out off screen, has a negative Y, and has a speed of zero, rotation of zero. And we have max speed, min speed. We have other things, other parameters that this, as I said, this bullet class will be able to be revisited and be very flexible down the road. And we'll just be activating some of the parameters that are there right now that we're not currently using. I thought about kind of minimizing this class and getting rid of the extra content in it and decided to give it to you fully featured so that down the road we don't even have to make any substantial changes to it. All we have to do is activate those currently right now disabled features or unused. They're not even disabled, they're just unused. Now the movement of the bullet, we're disregarding that as far as making any changes. You will notice if the bullet goes off screen on any side, it calls its own reset function. The reset function kills its speed and says firing is false, therefore setting the bullet up ready to shoot once more. When we look at the bullet, the bullet is simply a green rectangle that is drawn at its set from its center point and its size is based on height and width. Again, you could change that, you could replace it with an image if you want, but the core of it could remain the same. So the bullet class should not require a lot of effort from you to work with. The important part is the bullet has a firing boolean. That means the bullet, when it's not firing, can then be fired. If the bullet's in use, we don't want it to be able to be reused. Because if we don't have that parameter in, and then when we run our program, we'll see that I can start, every time I push the button to start firing, if the bullet's almost off screen, I can start it over. If I push the fire button frequently, 
So that causes problems. So this is why we need to modify the bullet so that it can only fire when the bullet is ready to be used, which is when it's already done moving from the previous firing action. That is what our firing boolean provides for us. After that, inside this, you will notice an additional key is being listened for. That key code is 32, and that is the space bar. Same with released and key pressed as before with 37, 38, 39, and 40 for being the arrow keys, and 32 is the space bar. So when I press space, I want it to fire. When I release space, we're not even having to do anything because the bullet is taken care of not caring if I'm still pressing the button down. Inside my main draw function or my game function, we'll see if space, I need to find out what, normally I would just send in the rotation of the sprite to the bullet but the sprite doesn't have a rotation value, it has a flipped value. Is it pointing left or is it pointing right? Just like the enemy has a flipped value, is it moving left or is it moving right? And those rotation values are zero and pi as was explained earlier. So the sprite, because it doesn't have a rotation value, it has a flipped value, we have to have this little extra bit of code in here and we can only shoot horizontally. You could potentially modify it so you could shoot up or down. If you did that, you might as well move into full-on rotation and work that way. And we're not going there during this session. But if I press the space bar, I figure out what rotation value I need to provide, 0 or pi, and then I tell the bullet to set its start location to the location of the sprite and give it that location or rotation value. That is how we fire. To find out if the bullet has intersected the enemy, I am calling rectangle intersect, but if you notice this time I'm passing in the bullet in the enemy instead of the sprite in the enemy. And if I do that, then I choose add score. Add score adds to my score. It tells the enemy to die or reset itself. And then it tells the bullet to reset itself after I hit it. I don't want my bullet to keep on going off screen. They're fast enough and the game board is small enough. That's not critical. That's just a nicety. If we turn that off, we'll see that when we fire, The bullet keeps going after it hits it, even though it affected the enemy. If I re-enable re -enable that, the bullet goes away, so we're assuming the bullet has been consumed through the collision with the enemy. But with this intersect, we have two rectangle intersect one is passing in the sprite in the enemy, and one rectangle is accepting the bullet in the enemy. And if I look at my functions, I will see rectangle intersect, sprite in R1 and R2, and if I look further down, I will see rectangle intersect, bullet in enemy, instead of sprite in enemy. But the guts of the function themselves are identical. It is possible through some additional layers of complexity we could have one function accepting both of these, but in the interest of keeping things a little bit more human readable and simple I elected to have two identical functions that just accept different classes for analyzing them for intersection. So if you put your rectangle intersect in and then forget to put the second one in and then you're like, well, I put the bullets in. Why is it not working? It's calling that function. Remember, one version of rectangle intersect wants a sprite 
and an enemy, and one version wants a bullet and an enemy. So that makes them different. Other than that, there's not much else here that is unique or different. And we can see that when it runs, if I shoot, my score goes up, and if I run into it, my lives go down. The question is, how close can I get to score a hit without losing a life? And now I lost my life. And in a complete version, after you've taken away a life or added the score, you could be checking to see, has the player won the game or lost the game? And that would complete the project.